Now the $300 price tag of devices, these are the ones that I'm honestly most excited about for 2021 and I'm just waiting to see you know how cheap these phones can get. Now I'll start off with my first recommendation, the iPhone 8 Plus. The second one is my favorite recommendation on this list to be honest, but I've seen a lot of iPhone 8 Pluses for even less than 250 so 300 you can easily pick up, maybe even like the 256 gig model of the iPhone 8 Plus for 300 who knows, but I'll definitely tell you the 8 Plus is a killer phone for the price tag. It has a lot of capability still. You have that dual camera setup, which is still really good. Like you actually have a lot of capability on that type of device. The screen is still pretty good. The build quality is awesome. Like I stated, accessories are cheap on this phone too. If you're really into that, you still have touch ID on this phone. And then this day and age wearing masks and stuff, it is a pretty important thing. If I'm being honest, having that capability of having a fingerprint sensor is really important. And like I said before, check range, jailbreak, all that stuff, you know, the 8 plus is a killer phone even now in 2021. But this next one, the iPhone 10, this is probably the best phone you can pick up for that price tag for $300, even on any price tag on an iPhone. This is arguably the best value per dollar. They are, you know, fluctuating 320, 350, 290 sometimes and in some cases, but typically an iPhone 10, you can pick up for around that $300 on average. And that is a really, really good price to pay for a phone of this magnitude. Now you have that gesture based design. So you have a pretty current looking phone. If you look at the front of the iPhone 10 and you look at the front of the iPhone 12, very little differences. The 12s are bigger and they have a little bit of different design, but they're pretty much almost the same as I think if I'm being honest. The fluidity of this phone is awesome. You have a lot of capability when it comes down to just that gesture based design, multitasking and all that stuff. You're still getting software support for a very long time with that A11 Bionic chip. Same thing as the 8 Plus, but with the iPhone 10, you're kind of feeling like you have a more current phone because of that design. With Face ID, that's probably its only disadvantage, you know, over Touch ID nowadays, but it still has a lot of capability when it comes down to it. And like I said, when you have a phone like an iPhone 10, you are definitely going to feel like you have a current phone with amazing build quality, pretty good performance still, pretty good cameras, and there's nothing really about the iPhone 10 that's really bad or that's like controversial right now. There was when it first came out. But as of right now, I think the iPhone 10 is probably my best recommendation on this list.